Today we're going to dive into the important subject of trusting God. Uh, and in this video I want to share the three things that you uh, need to know or believe in order to trust God. You see, trust is not just a choice. I can't just do a video and say you need to trust God. You just need to trust Him through whatever you go through. And we've heard so many sermons on trusting God, but I think when we have a misconception about what trust is, oftentimes we don't know how to apply it to our life. I often like to say it like this, trust is relational. It's trust is based upon who you're trusting and faith is situational. It's what you're facing. And so there's three things that I encourage everybody. Um, I sound like a broken record at times because I share it so often that people need to know in order for trust to rise up. Remember, trust is a byproduct of these things. It's not something that you just make happen. Uh, the first thing I encourage all of us with is that trust or God is always good. Now this is a, a lens shift. This is a belief that I adopt, that I, I, I begin to apply inside of my own heart. And then I begin to renew my mind to this idea that God is always good. That you can't find anywhere within God in His heart, in His motives, in His intentions and that is not good. No matter what you go through, what you face, what He allows, what He doesn't allow, what He gives, what He doesn't give, He's always good. And His goodness has nothing to do with circumstances. I don't measure God's goodness based upon what I go through or based upon what I think He should give me or what He didn't give me. So God's goodness is not based upon circumstances whatsoever when you do get to that place where you live life based upon circumstances, one day God is so good and you're shouting His praises and the next season of life you're discouraged and disappointed and wondering, God, where are you? Why are you not good? Uh, the second thing about understanding God's always good is that we do not measure. You don't measure His goodness based upon how you feel any particular day. Our feelings shift, our feelings change, and that's why I think it's important to understand that trust is a byproduct of believing these three things that I'm sharing with you. Trust is something that rises. It's a, it's a response and to who He is and to the goodness that He is all about. The second thing that I encourage people is that God always has your best in mind. Now this is a tough one for people to accept, but I truly believe at the end of the day, if God takes me left, it's because it, hey, He had my best in mind. I think about the Israelites who struggled to trust God. They complained, they were embittered at times, they grumbled, they moaned about the path that God took them on. And there's a verse in the Bible that uh, helps me understand that as they were going to go to the land of Canaan, and it was a, a 9 to 11 day journey, he said, lest they see war in return. So God led them the way of the wilderness because He had greater intentions. But ultimately it was because He had their best in mind. He wanted to develop His people. He wanted to build this confidence in who He is to them and who they are to Him. He wanted them to understand that this is about the journey, not the destination. And most of all, he wanted to get Egypt out of their systems and out of their way of thinking. And so, God always has your best in mind, whether you're Joseph and you think you're betrayed. At the end of the day, Joseph said in Genesis 50, you didn't do this to me. God was the one that has done this to me. I think that's Genesis 45. And so God is always good and He always has your best in mind. If you feel like you're going through a detour in life, just realize He has your best in mind so that detour, although it may seem inconvenient and, and, and going away from the promises and maybe the prophecies over your life, uh, He has your best in mind. You can already begin to feel when you begin to believe this what changes when you face off with circumstances. Uh, the last one is that God is always setting you up to succeed in Him. He's not just setting you up to succeed in your business or in your relationships. Uh, those things hopefully are a byproduct of things that you do right. 
but he's setting you up to succeed in what he's called you to do. And any challenge that I face, any trial or circumstance, I realize it's preparation. He's preparing me for something. He's giving me a trial run of me learning and discovering what it means to trust him even when I don't see him or when I don't feel him or I don't hear his voice. I like how Paul said it in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. He says, And I know this, that all things work together for the good. Somehow, some way, all things work together for the good of those who are called according to His name and those who are called according to His purpose. And so, it's understanding that God is always good. He always has your best in mind. And He is always setting you up to succeed in Him. And, and it's as you begin to believe this about your Heavenly Father, as you begin to build confidence in His goodness, that you can do what James says, count it all joy. I can now begin to count the circumstances I face with joy, knowing that those trials that I'm facing will produce patience. And once I let patience have its perfect work, I will be complete and lacking nothing. So, His goodness is not about circumstance. His goodness is not about um, whether or not He should have or should not have allowed something in my life. His goodness is who He is. And, and I'm a recipient of that goodness, even though it may look like I'm experiencing anything but His goodness. And I think a lot of it has to come down to a thought that I believe may be a little bit controversial, but I believe it to be true as you look through the Scriptures. As I hear so many people say, praise the Lord, God's in control. Hey, I know you're going through a tough thing, but God's in control. And they con constantly put this onus on God of, you're going through this, God's in control, He's going to get you through. And there's many great promises of God delivering us and bringing us through, but I often encourage people with this, is that God is in charge, not necessarily in control. What I mean by that is if you owned a restaurant or you're a parent, you realize you're in charge of that household, you're in charge of that restaurant, you're in charge of that business, but you're not in control of everything that takes place. And God has given man free will in order for us to make decisions according to uh, what we have come up in our mind of what we want or what we don't want. And so I like to say that God is in charge. He is the authority. The authority. He sits on the throne. There's nothing that if He did not want it to happen, it could not happen. Uh, but He's not in control of everything we do. He's not in control of everything we think. He's not in control of everything we see or everything we say. He's not in control of every influencing thought that the enemy gives us. So I think that's a good distinction to kind of bottle this up together, realizing, God, I know you're in charge. Um, but I believe that God is always good. He always has your best in mind, and He's always setting you up to succeed in Him. And so the battle is this. Will I get to a place where I can rest? Rest in what? I don't rest in the fact that His promise came to pass. I don't rest in the fact that life is the way that I want it to be. I rest in His what? In His goodness. I'm now responding to His goodness, not because I'm experiencing it or seeing it with my own eyes, but because of what I believe. And I believe, and when the Lord gave me this lens change, the way that I looked at circumstances and the way that I looked at Him completely changed. This is the lens change that He gave me. That Justin, I'm always good. I always have your best in mind and I'm always setting you up to succeed. And that's why you can count it all joy when you encounter various trials. I just want to finish off with this verse, um, Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14. David said it like this. He said, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I want to encourage you today to ask the Lord to give you this lens change like He did to me a number of years ago, that you can see now through every trial and circumstance, you can see His goodness. You can see His handiwork. You can know that He's up to something. And that your, your relationship with Him is not tied to what you're going through, a circumstance. You're not constantly talking to Him about, can you fix this, change this, do this? 
You're just discovering who He is and who you are to Him, and you're enjoying the journey that He has you on. So I hope this helps you understand that trust is a response. It's not a choice. And it comes from a lens change or a lens upgrade, as I like to say, of knowing that God's good. Um, so I hope that encourages you today. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I appreciate it. You, uh, you sharing with others and subscribing to this channel. God bless.